Good evening, good evening, good morning. It's normally an evening I'm working, as you can tell these days. Um, first of all, may I ask how many professionals are in the room today? How many, hands up if you consider yourself a professional? Hmm. Well, you're losing some money this morning, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I don't do that. Can someone do that for me? Would you mind? I'm not very good at techo. Thank you. So, okay, so how many people here in the room are property developers at the moment? Professional developers, full-time developers? That makes three of us, four of us, okay. And how many people in the room are budding entrepreneurs get, trying to get into property and that sort of stuff? Good. Well, I'm not going to sell you books. I'm going to give you a book. So there's a couple of books there, which I'm sure saves you 9.95 anyway. If, at, at, any, at any good bookshops. And the gentleman or the lady there, and there's another one for a gentleman over there, which I'm sure we can pass that through as we go. Now, you never need to ask a property developer more than once to come and talk about himself or herself, especially when uh, you've got a 150 flat development to sell uh, and, that, um, and a book to sell and a couple of property shows to promote on uh, Property TV, channel 189. And if some of you don't think you know one eight, channel 189, it's uh, next to the porn channel, so I expect some of you do. <laughs> Um, however, um, I was delighted to come today, and the reason, uh, the main reason for wanting to come today was to support Steve. Steve and I have known each other since 2009, when I purchased, along with my business partner, Auction House UK. At the time, it had seven licences. Um, I sold my shares last year, and sadly sold my shares, really. I enjoyed my time with Auction House, uh, but the money was handy, so um, not too bad. Uh, and um, Steve and I got together to uh, help um, our auction clients fund their developments and fund, their, fund, fund the houses and so on. And over the years, Steve has done a lot of work um, with Auction House. And we, when we sold it, we got 44 franchises, so we didn't do too badly on that, in that business. So the other reason also um, is that on my travels doing my, doing my deals, and they're not always as, as big as the one I'm going to show you now, um, I often recommend Steve to help the, my purchaser, who normally needs a bit of help if they're buying off me, um, to, uh, to fund it. And, and over the years, Steve has done a great job during that. Mind you, I haven't had to receive any commission from that, uh, but uh, I suppose I've had the deal, haven't I, Steve? So I can't have it always, can I? No, thank you. I thought that would be the answer. Um, so, um, a few years ago, about 2013, this tab lock in the background you can see, um, that was soon after I bought it. I looked quite relaxed and young there. Um, so, 150 flats. It was called the wine rack, nicknamed the wine rack because it looks from a distance like you can put bottles of wine in it, and that's why... Uh, it's called the Wine Rack, and we, and we have retained the name, uh, the Wine Rack. So um, I bought and sold a lot of tower blocks around the country over the years. Um, I even came to, uh, I say even, we bought one in Everton, uh, Liverpool. And um, in those days, the um, vice chairman of Liverpool City Council was Derek Hatton. Anyone remember Degsy? Derek Hatton, yes? Well, Derek on, went on to become a property consultant of ours. Um, we had some great nights out, and we never paid for anything, to be fair, but we didn't manage to do many deals, apart from one tab lock in Everton, which we then sold on to someone else, to be fair, we didn't do that one. So, um, I had some experience in tab locks. This came up, my hometown, um, I did my first tab lock in, my, in, in Ipswich in 1986, um, and from then on, we went around the country and said, buying tower blocks, refurbishing them and selling them on to first-time buyers. So when this opportunity came up, I felt I really couldn't uh, resist having a go. So we had a go, and we got, got the deal agreed in 2014. And at the time, we had a lot of projects on the go, a lot of things happening. I was a bit short of money to buy it. So I thought, what am I going to do? Because it doesn't matter how much money you've got, 
asset, rich, cash poor, that's property developers for you. We're all the same. Well, most of us are the same, the, unless the very, very successful ones are millions in the bank. But there aren't as many as them as you think. So um, I rang Steve and I said, Steve, do you fancy coming down to Ipswich? And after he realised where Ipswich was, um, I persuaded him to come down by saying we'll, we'll uh, put him up in a five-star hotel, buy dinner and have a night out with him. So he came down and I said, look, Steve, we need to borrow some money on this project. And it was the shell of the shell as you saw it there. And um, he said, OK, um, let me, let me uh, have another drink or two uh, and go back and talk to my people. Let's see what we can do. And I'm eternally grateful for Steve because without him, genuinely, we wouldn't have purchased this project. I wouldn't have all the headaches I've got today and all the worry. So thanks, Steve, for that. Um, but seriously, without um, his help and, without, and bridging finance solutions help, we would not have bought this scheme. Having bought it, I couldn't fund it. Bit of a problem, went to all the usual banks we go to, and they all went, no, John, we don't want to do it. It's half finished. We don't know what's, what you, you know, we don't know what's happened to the building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a bit of a problem. Now, if you've got a bit of a problem and you've got a Tory MP, go and see him. Go and see him. Even Labour, maybe, but mainly Tory. And if it's a, if it's a, a seat where they haven't, they haven't um, which is marginal, They'll help you as much as they can because what they want to do is promote the MP, promote the MP that he's, he's, he's forward thinking and he's getting things done in the town. So that's exactly what I did. I went to see Ben Gummer, who was the MP at the time. And I said, Ben, we can't fund it. What do we do? We're going to look real prats on this one. And he said, leave it with me. Let me talk to the minister, housing minister, which the housing ministers change every year. They've had hundreds of them, housing ministers. But anyway, he went to see them. He came back and said, John... Uh, I think we might be able to help you fund it. So I said, great. I said, how much do you, they said, how much do you need? I said, well, I think I need about £18 million, pounds, please. They went, oh, well, let's see how we get on. So cut a long story short, in between the times of buying it and actually being able to develop it, prices, costs went up dramatically, um, which was... a. It, more of a problem. Eventually, um, Homes England, as it's now called, and Chris, it is Chris, it's Keith, sorry, Keith. Um, he hasn't been there long, though, to be at Homes England, have you? So I got the name wrong. I do apologise. So Homes England, which is part of the government, uh, 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 um, funded it to the tune of 15 million. Unfortunately, 15 million wasn't enough. So there's a, in every area you, 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 you in the country, there's a thing called the... Um, local enterprise partnership and they are very forward thinking they're all funded by the government so um, it's all a bit strange really but anyway I went to see them and the chairman there said to me John if you get a little bit short come and see me if you need a million pounds or so come and see me so I said okay thanks so I went to see him and I said um, oh he said good to see you he said do you need a million pounds I said no two no three no four no five yeah five can I have five million pounds please um, cut a very long story short, he was a bit shocked to start with, but he eventually agreed that we should, we should borrow £5 million from him, or from the fund. So we got £15 million from Homes England, which we're delighted to have, and we got £5 million from the local enterprise partnership. Total job, £27 million to build it by this time. So, we're all set to go. Well, I thought we were all set to go. Then, of course, we had um, the Brexit, which is a bit of a problem because the pound against the euro went the wrong way. 70% of the materials on any project are imported. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, and normally 50%, nearly always works out the same. 50% materials, 50 materials, 50% wages. Nearly always on any project is almost uncannily that it is normally the case. So that costs a lot more money. We then had Grenfell, which was obviously a terrible disaster. Fortunately, uh, our overcladding from the start was non-combustible. But we did decide to put some um, um, sprinklers in and so on, which we didn't have to do. The fire officer wasn't, was fairly relaxed about it, which surprised me. But um, we have put sprinklers in everywhere. So that's that. So I'm now in the process of about to sign the contract 
for the building work, etc. I'm driving back from the Conservative Conference. It's funny I became a member of the Conservative Party. Fancy that. I'm driving back and Mrs May's car passes me. Woof. She comes past me with lights flashing and so on. And I'm just driving along thinking, you know what? She's got some problems. That was the day that she was coughing and spluttering and the sign fell down and she's just got worse since actually, but anyway. Um, suddenly uh, the phone rang and uh, it was the managing director of Carters who were doing the building work and they said, John, we've got a problem. Just about to sign the contract. I said, what's that? The car stacker people don't want to do it. The German. Now, 264 car spaces in the centre of the building. You drive in, you get out your car, it turns it on a turntable and it takes it up and slots in the nearest spot in the middle of the building, in the centre core of the building. 2.5 million euros to do it. Only one company can do it, which is um, War, who are the German company, and they had decided seven days before about to sign the contract that they don't want to do it. Oh dear, I think I've got a bit of a problem. So, what do we do? I said, well, get on the phone and, and ask them if we can fly over to Stuttgart and see them. So, um, we, uh, he rang back and said, they'll only see us between 10 and 11 on Monday morning, because then he's off for three weeks' holiday. That's the Germans. Interesting. So I said, okay, well, uh, we've just got to go. We've just got to go and do it and see how we get on. So I went over there, got to the airport. Now, I buy some horses uh, around Europe sometimes, for show, some show jumpers, and my wife does dressage, unfortunately, which is bloody boring, but um, the show jumping is quite exciting. And we do go and buy horses abroad. <laughs> and when you go and buy a horse abroad, they always pick you up from the airport, take you around, show you the horses, drop you back at the airport, off you go. So I was thinking... As we're spending two and a half million euros, we might actually get picked up at the airport. But oh no, half an hour away from their factory. But oh no, we didn't get picked up. So we got to the airport, flew in. I said to James, the MD of Carters, I said, what time are they picking us up? Oh, they're not. Oh, this is not sounding good at all. What am I going to do? Anyway, we got there, sat down. 20 minutes late, he comes in, sits down and says, we just don't want to do it, John. Uh, we don't like working in, in England. Um, the builders, on the whole, don't get things done on time. Really? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> and we don't want to do it. And anyway, we're too busy. So I said, OK. Well, what about if we fit it and you build it? How about that? Well, we might consider that. I thought, well, that's good of you. So eventually, after another half an hour, because remember, you only spend an hour with us because he's very important, uh, we agreed that he would manage to fit it into his work schedule, which is very good of him, but couldn't start for 12 months, but they'll fit it in. They've done 170 around the world. They work in Mexico. They work in all over God-forsaken countries, but they don't want to work in England, which is interesting. So anyway, that was all agreed, and um, so we lease it's being built, but I've got no one to fit the bloody thing which is a specialist job. So Carter's the, ma the, 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 the main builders, they don't want to know. They, you know. Main builders these days, big contractors these days, they don't have any workforce at all. All they have is a management structure. That's all they have is a management structure. They don't do anything at all. Um, so we couldn't find anyone to, to fit it at all. They couldn't find anyone, we couldn't find anyone. Uh, and then... Jens is his name. We had a, a, a conference call with Jens. On the, but this is about a month later. We still haven't signed the contract. You know, we need to get on. Homes England are saying, come on, this is the biggest loan we've given to any private company at that stage. You're under pressure. And to be fair, Homes England are under pressure a bit because they want to demonstrate that they can lend money on difficult developments and see them come to fruition. So Jans came on the phone on the conference call. He said, oh, John, I've got some good news. And I thought, here we go. That's good. Oh, yes. Got someone who'll fit it. I said, great. That's brilliant news. Thank you, Jans. I thought, I'll get off the phone quick before he says what he's about to say. And we all know what's coming, don't we? One slight problem, John. Oh, yeah. What's that, Jans? 
Well, they are very good company, but they're very expensive. I said, oh yes, yes, we need another 150,000 euros. I said, I think you said 50,000 euros, didn't you? He said, no, yeah, no, John, I said 75. I said, I think you said 65. He said, done. So I think I got done for another 65,000 euros I needn't paid probably, but anyway, I was just relieved that it was all done. And, and it's very interesting with the Germans because you would have thought, for, we went around the factory when we were there, and you would have thought, this company are very professional, been going since 1919. And you would have thought, when you go around their factory, they'll be health and safety mad, hardly any health and safety. We didn't have to wear hats, we didn't have to wear um, ear things, nothing. We were just wandering around the factory. It was unbelievable. I was very surprised. In England, that wouldn't happen. Um, I was very, very surprised. So, the next thing is signing the contract. Well, you wouldn't think that would be too difficult for the Germans, would you? First of all, we sent it to them. They lost it, allegedly. After a week, still not back. Oh, we better send it. We couried another one over. Couried another one over. They wouldn't, they wouldn't sign it electronically. They insisted that they printed it, signed it, and then had it couriered back to us. Technology. There we go. So, all done. We're ready to start. Surely nothing else can go wrong, can it? Hopefully not. So, the good news is we're on schedule, we're on time. 150 flats, 120 with river views, looking straight down the river. Market's not too good. Don't tell Homes England that, though. So the market's not too bad. It's not, too, not great, not too bad. The Brexit thing doesn't seem to affect that many people. I think the market on the whole is incredibly robust considering where we are. Uh, and, and I recently, I'm chairman, I then, oh, I then became chairman of the Conservative Association, Ipswich for my sins, and I got sent down to Downing Street to uh, listen to the um, Chequers Checkers um, agreement. So two days after it came out, I had to go down to London and um, listen and ex then explain to all my association how good it was and why we should all, everyone should get behind it. And it was pretty obvious in the room then that no one was happy with it. But I didn't, of course, everyone else had read, read the whole thing. I hadn't read any of it. I just turned up. And um, it, when it was my turn to ask a question, I said, well, Gavin Bardra, who's the chief of staff for um, Theresa May, she said, um, he said, or oh, sorry, I said, that my question was, how many of the people negotiating Brexit are Remainers? And he said, we all are. I said, he said, I said, including Theresa. He said, yes. So I said, how on earth do you expect to get a deal done if you, none of you want to do it? Um, and I'll just leave you with that thought um, on that one. So, the other reason I'm very keen to be here today is that I rang Steve about uh, November time and said, Steve, I've got a fantastic opportunity for you to really get some great marketing. He said, what's that? He said, is it going to cost me any money? Typical. I said, yes, it will do, Steve, but you will more than compensate, it will more than compensate you for, for anything like that. I said, I'm doing a TV show on, on Sky. He, of course, he said he hadn't seen it. We know he's lying. For the obvious reasons. So, uh, the, the TV show I'm, I'm putting together is um, um, Property Elevator, and it's similar to Dragon's Den, but it's for property developers. So, four, four property developers sit there, two ladies, two men, two from the south, two from the north, I'm the chairman, and um, property uh, entrepreneurs come in and pitch their property to us. And uh, if we like what we hear, one of us hopefully will buy it and give them a share of the profit for overseeing it and bringing the deal to us. So I said this to Steve and Steve thought, oh, that sounds quite good. I said, so anyway, we got together and uh, I'm delighted to say that um, um, bridging financial solu finance solutions are going to um, be part of the show 
and uh, we're absolutely delighted. Um, all we've got to do now is get some contestants, which will be good. Um, so the idea is that the, the four angels, we're calling them angels because we've got to get sued if we call ourselves dragons, won't we? So the four angels uh, bid against each other by the amount they offer the person who's bought the deal. So um, if, you know, if you're one of the concept, if you're, if you're one of my angels, what's your name, sir? Glenn. Glenn. And uh, we like what Melanie's brought to us in terms of deal-wise. I might say, Melanie, I'll give you 30% share of the deal. I'll put all the, I, the, the, the angels can put all the money up, take all the risk. You get 30%. Now you might say, hey, what does he know? I'll give you 40% of the deal. And then you choose who you want to go with. The good looking guy at 30% or the even good looking better guy at 40%. So that's how it's going to work. And it's going to take probably three to six months to get going and to pilot it and so on. Um, but we're already getting going doing that. So um, hopefully that will work very well. I'm doing a tour later on, in, well, a tour, what am I talking about? It's not a tour, really. I'm doing um, a number of engagements around the country later on in the year, promoting um, um, property, and I'm doing uh, day seminars where I go through the whole process from uh, choosing a good solicitor, and my advice there is uh, don't pick a solicitor who's about to go on holiday for three weeks, don't pick a solicitor who's about to go on maternity leave, don't pick a solicitor who's about to go on paternity leave. Make sure you meet them. They're not some computer system somewhere. You meet them, you sit down with them, they understand what you want, and they understand it needs to be done quickly and efficiently and at a sensible price. Don't try and screw them down to no money because you'll get what you pay for. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is about me done, time-wise. How am I getting on? Spot on. Super. Thank you very much for listening to me. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.